Hey everyone, Savu here and in today's video we are going to learn how to implement a shop system in any game. Let's jump into it. In the main menu of the scene I have already placed the shop icon that consists of a revive potion image, a text which represents the current amount of revives we have and a plus button that we are going to click in order to open up the shop. The shop panel that will be opened after clicking the shop icon will look something like this. Of course, we're going to work on it a little bit later. For now, let's write the code which will be responsible for opening up and closing the shop. The first thing we're going to need will be a public game object variable for our shop panel. Next, we're going to need a public function that is called every time we're going to open up the shop. As a parameter, we will have an integer value and simply check with an if else statement if it's equal to 0 or 1. In case of 0, we are going to activate our shop using the set active true, and otherwise, we deactivate it using set active false. Now, in Unity, don't forget to assign the shop panel to the public game object variable of our script. Next step is to assign our script to our button that will call our public function we created with an integer value of 0. Clicking now on this button will open up the shop. In order to close the shop, we simply assign the same script to the back button and call the same exactly public function with an integer value of 1. Ok, let's see what exactly we have achieved so far when playing the game. Our character runs, he dies and the game over scene pops up. Of course, first thing to do here, that everyone should, is to click on the ad in order to receive your premium currency. You can see that the buttons work and the shop opens and closes exactly as we want. The shop is going to look similar to the coin shop I've already implemented in the game. To do this, we open our shop panel and create there an empty game object which will be a placeholder for our first item to buy. The first child of the game object will be the icon of the item. We deselect the Raycast target and adjust the image. Next, we are going to create another UI image for the background following the same steps. Now, since you know the structure and in order to be faster, I will simply grab a ready template from another shop and copy paste it here. Now the only thing to do is to rework this template in order to use the new items. We change the amount text to 1 and use another image which will represent the revive potion that we are going to buy. After that, change the price that is on top of the buy button and follow exactly the same steps for every other item you want the shop to contain. In my case, I will have another option to buy 3 revive potions at the same time and another option to buy 5. Of course the prices will have an increasing discount, which means that's best to buy 5 at a time. Final step is to adjust the window to your preferences and check how it looks like when playing the game. I am pretty much happy with the result, so for now I'm going to leave it as it is. With that done, we are finally ready to write a C-sharp code to actually implement the buy mechanics of the shop. You can write or add this piece of code to any script you already have as long as you know to which game object it is assigned. For each item in the shop, we will need a public function with a cost integer value as a parameter. For one revive potion, I simply name the function buy revive tier 1. The first line here is just the sound effect I play every time I clicked on any button. The next if statement is really important and since the currency of the game are pots, we want to check if our total pots are greater or equal to the cost of the item. If so, we have to subtract the cost from the amount and add the right number of revive potions to our total revives. The next three lines with a reward indicator is just a text game object which pops up saying that the transaction was completed. In addition to that, I play another sound to make the success even more noticeable. Finally, after every transaction, it's very important to save the information of the player, so that no data gets lost. If you want an in-depth tutorial on how to save data locally or on any cloud, 
please comment down below and I'll make it happen very soon. The next thing we want to check is the case of not having enough pots in order to buy the item. If so, I just change the text of the reward indicator to not enough pots and play another sound to make the failure obvious. And nothing more is needed here. Now since I have 3 items available in the shop, I just copy and paste it another 2 times and change the amount of revive potions we are going to get. We are done with the code and the next step is to assign to every buy button the right public function we created. Don't forget that it always needs the right cost amount as a parameter. Now after all of that the shop system is actually done, but since we want it to be also attractive to the player, we create a text game object to show how many revive potions we currently have. In another script we are going to have access to this game object by using a public game object variable. In my case it's called revive plus. In the start function we want to assign to the text component the total amount of revives we have at the start of the game. Don't forget that when assigning an integer or a float variable to any text, you have to first convert it to a string with a toString function. Next we have to continuously check inside of the update function if our text component equals the total amount of revives we have stored inside of our variable. If not, it will simply mean that we bought some more or used them to revive after dying in the game. If so, we move with the move towards function the value of the text from the old amount of revives to the new one. Here the first parameter is the old value which actually is the text, the second value is the new total of revives which we store inside of our variable, the third and last parameter is the time needed to move between the two values. And that's all we need to set up a shop system. Let's go back in Unity and buy some revive potions. We click on the plus button, the shop opens and we can buy as many revives as we want, since I cheated a little and increased my in-game currency. You will notice the text indicator which we coded earlier saying that the transaction was completed. Now let's spend all of our currency until we have not enough to buy any other revive. The text indicator is now saying that we have not enough pots, as expected. And with that said, the shop system was a total success and will be available in the next update of Sparta. Stay tuned! The next update will also feature a new world with new enemies and a boss to defeat. Play Sparta now for free with the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching, smash the like and subscribe buttons and I'll see you next time. Ciao!